If you got a brand spanking new yard like I've got back here, one of the first things, the most fundamental things that you can do to understand your lawn before you start improving it is to figure out what soil type you have, soil texture. Now, obviously, if you have had a lawn for a very long time and you don't know your soil texture, this will also apply. And if you've had a lawn that you've just neglected for years and years and years, this could just be a little fun afternoon project. And the reason I say an afternoon project and fun is because you get to get your hands a little bit dirty and it only takes about 10 minutes or so. As I've said many times on this channel, it takes way more time to make these videos than it does to actually do the stuff that I do in the videos. I just moved into this house a couple weeks ago and I'm only now starting to address the lawn. Before I do any sort of major renovations, I'm going to dig into the ground and figure out what type of soil I have, and I'm going to use a jar test. There's certainly better ways to do it, but this is the easiest, simplest way that anyone could do. All you need is a jar and a shovel. Now to do these tests, it's probably best to do it in different areas of the, of the yard. So for instance, the main front yard that you see right here might have completely different soil than on the other side of the truck over there. And it might have completely different soil than what's found in the parkway strip or in the backyard or in the garden area. All of these areas could potentially have different soil textures. And that's important because certain grass types don't grow very well in clay. Certain grass types grow better in sandy soil. Depending on how you irrigate, you might need to irrigate your lawn slower with emitters that put out a lower gallons per minute. If you got a lot of sand in your soil, you might be able to get away with more water per minute without experiencing runoff. Here in my lawn, I'm gonna do this jar test on all of the various areas, but I'm gonna to focus today on the area behind my truck over there, which I'm calling the side yard. I don't know, it's the front side yard. It's the side that borders my neighbor. I'm gonna be doing a lawn renovation there. It's one of the first major project projects I'll be doing on this lawn. And I'm gonna be putting a grass type in that has roots that go very, very deep. So what I wanna do is I wanna get some soil using my, my shovel, or as you've seen in this video sequence, I'm using a uh, tool called a, a pro plugger so that I can really grab a very, very precise uh, core and just use the soil from the bottom of it. And it doesn't really disrupt the lawn very much, but a shovel works just fine. I wanna get the soil from roughly three to four inches down, which is what the pro plugger pulls. And then I also, because I want deep rooted grass there, I wanna get some of the soil that's even below that. So I've dug a chunk out of the lawn and then I use the plugger to grab some of the soil from that lower uh, soil profile. That would probably be more in the six inch depth range. And once you get all of this soil, throw it into your bowl, mix it all up and pull out any rocks or uh, large chunks of things that you find in there. For me in my bowl, I'm finding for the most part just grass roots, which I'm trying to pull out. All of those fibers kind of mess up the jar test. And then once I get a lot of those chunks out, I then go and take it over to my colander, my strainer, so that I can kind of fluff the, the dirt up uh, break up any of the larger particles into smaller particle sizes and it ends up being quite fluffy. This feels gritty. Kind of like fluffy sand. My guess is it's going to be a very sandy, uh, sandy mix once I do the jar test. Also, if I've missed any small rocks or anything like that, the colander will pull a lot of that out. The point of the jar test is to separate the sand from the silt from the clay in your soil so you can measure how much of each one you have. Rocks or sticks and things kind of mess up those ratios. Now with the soil sifted, I'm going to go ahead and throw a lot of the soil into a clear jar. Uh, bigger jars are a little bit better for this, but smaller, tall, skinny jars like the one I'm using work just fine. Just make sure to not fill it up too high. I kind of borderline filled it up a little bit too high in this lawn, but uh, as you'll see later in this video, it all worked out anyway. With the soil in the jar, we're then gonna top off the jar, leaving a little bit of room at the top with water. And then it is significantly better to add a little bit of a surfactant or just soap. If you read online, powdered dish soaps are supposed to be better than liquid dish soaps. I've never researched why that's the case, but I don't use powdered dish soap in my house. So I, but I am a lawn guy, so I do use surfactants. So that's what I used in this scenario. And the reason that we do 
the soap thing or the surfactant thing is that stuff helps break those soil particles apart. It just helps them separate. So when we shake the jar vigorously, we can shake it for, you know, a minute, two minutes, depending on how like gung-ho you are about it, you can shake it hard for five minutes. But regardless, if you're putting that soap or that surfactant in there, the soil particles will separate from themselves better. So that when the settling process happens, you end up getting cleaner lines of separation between the various soil fractions. Kind of like chocolate milk. Rule of thumb is that you shake this thing vigorously for a minute or two, and then you set it down on a level surface and wait one minute for the sand particles to settle. Draw a line on the jar where that happens. I, for kicks and giggles, waited a couple more minutes and drew another line. See if I could identify how much of the uh, finer sand particles came down. And then after two hours, you'll come back and draw another line. And that's generally where the silt line is. The clay particles are far smaller. If you look at them under a microscope, they're way smaller than everything else. Those take a long time to settle, so we wait a full 48 hours. After 48 hours, your water is most likely still going to be cloudy, like it was in my case, but your clay fraction is going to be almost completely settled at that point, enough to stop the jar test and just call it quits. For me, I went and grabbed my ruler and measured out how much of my soil was clay versus silt versus sand and I found roughly 55 to 57 percent of my soil is sand roughly 33 percent of my soil was silt and only a small seven percent fraction was clay all right I uh, redrew these lines with my black marker because you can see it better and I've relocated to get perfect sunlight so you can really see the layers here. This first line was roughly one minute after I shook uh, the jar vigorously. All of the sand particles, the heaviest particles, are the ones that go and settle to the bottom first. And just for kicks and giggles, I waited another couple minutes after that to see if any other sand settled down. And it was slightly higher. Uh, so in theory, the sand particles that are on the second like miniature line are not the biggest sand particles, kind of a little bit smaller. So I'm going to take my ruler here and get an actual percentage measurement of everything. Of course, before I do that, up here at the tippy top, you see all these, uh, these floaties. Uh, this is basically the organic matter that doesn't fall into any of the three categories. So uh, we try to pull out the bigger chunks of organic matter like wood chips or roots or any other particularly large fibers that are in the water. But even through the sifting process, you can see that there's still some up there. Typically, I measure in inches, but for this, I'm going to measure in centimeters or millimeters, really, to be able to tell the difference a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and assume that the bottom of the jar is probably about three millimeters high. So the top of my silt layer is sitting at... Remember, each centimeter is 10 millimeters, so we got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 roughly 62 millimeters high. Take away three, we're looking at 59 millimeters of soil material that's in there. Now, if you consult the soil texture pyramid, which I've got here on the screen, it's actually a diagram that I was looking at on the computer from uh, one of the universities. It's one of my favorite versions of it because it reminds you which direction things go. It's a pyramid, so you find your soil percentage consistency on one line and you follow it in a direction and they intersect with all of the other soil uh, fractions and then that intersection point is right where you would label what your soil is. For me I'm on the edge of a sandy loam going into the loam but I just don't have enough clay to get into that loam category but it's pretty close. For me this is good to know because I know that if I put a lot of water down on the lawn at any given time, like in a very short span of time, it is most likely going to penetrate into the soil and go down fairly quickly. And a lot of that moisture is not going to be held there for an exceptional period of time because I don't have a heavy clay concentration. But that is also important for me to know because when I fertilize my lawn, fertilizer is going to leach through the soil profile much faster. So it will be more important for me to apply fertilizer a little bit more often, but in smaller quantities. 
and I should emphasize over the coming years increasing the CEC of my lawn. Now I haven't tested the CEC of my lawn yet and I will but based on the soil texture my guess is the CEC of my lawn is going to be a little bit low. I'll be adding soil amendments over the coming seasons to help my lawn retain nutrients in the soil profile so that they don't leach through. That's going to be a long play. It's going to be something I'm going to be working on season after season after season while the lawn slowly improves over time. Now I say this is one of the most important fundamental things that you can do for starting to care for a lawn. Uh, the other really, really important thing is getting to know what your soil pH is. Now you can do full on soil tests uh, to find out a lot of this information like you, you do a test and you take it off to a laboratory and have them um, or you mail it off to a laboratory and have them test it for you. But there are things that you can do at home like this jar test or your home pH test, which is what I'm also going to be doing, uh, I don't know, probably in about two days or so. You don't really need any test to check your pH if all you want to know is if it is basic, neutral, or acid. And that's what I want to know because the vast majority of lawns do best in a slightly acidic soil. Now I won't be able to get an exact number on it, but I can tell whether my lawn soil is basic or acid in about 10 minutes. And if you wanna know how to do that, then this video up here is gonna show you exactly how to do it. I'll be publishing that video in a few days, but the vast majority of you will be watching this when the video is available. So make sure to take a look at that next.